Saturday, September 19th. All eyes are on the Gulf as we enter our record-breaking hurricane season. We have Tropical Storm Beta out there. It's not the first Tropical Storm Beta. The record-breaking season of 2005 also had a beta that struck Nicaragua. And in fact, in 2005, we, we went all the way through Zeta in the Greek alphabet. That's six letters in. So that would be getting to the equivalent of F in the normal hurricane naming scheme. Anyway, here's what we have this evening. Hurricane Teddy, 120 miles an hour, putting that solidly in the Category 3 range. That is expected to go east of Bermuda. However, the track will take it up into the Canadian Maritimes and have some effects up there. Also, Wilfred, following close in the footsteps of Teddy, that's now showing a slightly southward deviation. It's still too early to call. You can see that this is moving very slowly. A quick look at the long-range models. All are showing recurvature still. It just looks like we're not entirely sure when that's going to happen. And finally, we're left with beta. 60 mile an hour winds, so still solidly a tropical storm. NHC is still expecting the storm to head for the Port Lavaca area near Victoria and remain north of Corpus Christi. However, they have weakened the storm this afternoon and no longer showing any indication of hurricane strength. As for the multitude of possible forecast tracks, including not only dynamical models, but also statistical models, a very wide range of solutions. So you can see that we have some agreement during the initial approach towards the central Texas coast. However, after that, it looks like you might as well use a dartboard. There is some grouping around the Houston area right there. Now, I haven't really sorted out which model is which, but I think we can be reasonably sure that the track is pretty much going to head up towards Houston or along the Texas Gulf Coast. So let's just take a quick look at these outliers that are bringing the storm up to Dallas. These look like European ensemble members. So I don't think we really need to pay much attention to that. Then down along the coast, we start picking up some of the more conventional models. But there's the official forecast. There's some of the consensus models, the GFS, the European model, the European deterministic model, the HMON, the HWRF, and I think that might be all the important ones. Well, no matter, we can look at that on Monday or tomorrow if I get a chance to put an update together. In any case, due to the slow movement, there is some tremendous rainfall potential. 15 to 20 inches along the coast between Victoria, Galveston, Houston, and 10 to 15 inland. And there is a lot of uncertainty in this forecast regarding the aerial placement. The sea surface temperature is running about 85 to 86 degrees out there. Although one issue we're dealing with is offshore flow. We've had a, that cold front come through a few days ago. There's been a cold front out in the Gulf of Mexico and we're infecting drier and cooler air out into the northern Gulf. But if we take a column of air off of, say, Port Aransas. It does look like there is some dry air up there above 10,000 feet. So when that gets entrained into the storm, the descending portions of the cells are evaporatively cooled. That brings some drier air down to the surface, cooler, denser air, and that can adversely affect the storm. The extent to which that's taken place is not really clear at this time. So what we see with the GFS model, looking at the cumulative wind gust, you can see that tomorrow, we're going through Sunday here, not really seeing much wind off the Texas coast. And only around Monday do we see some of those values coming up. You can see that's pretty similar to what we have today. So we're talking about maybe 50 to 60 miles an hour there. That's certainly tropical storm force winds. And then moving forward into Tuesday and Wednesday, it weakens 
and we don't see any more reflection in the wind data. But by the way, there's Teddy out there. You can see that that storm is passing just east of Bermuda. Looks like it's taken an even f further track to the east. So the European model, this is the non-cumulative wind plot. Getting a few bits of gray in there indicating 120 kilometer hour wind, which is about 70 miles an hour. So a European model is suggesting maybe briefly hurricane strength tonight. Remember, NHC is not going for that. And then moving forward, yeah, there is some weakening tomorrow, but it's keeping the intensity up as it approaches the coast around Victoria. And then things wash out during the day on Monday, and the system comes inland. And after that, of course, the precip plume will end up moving towards the northeast. You can see it passing over northeast Texas Thursday and then into the Mississippi River Valley on Friday. So that's the solution for the European model. And just a quick look at the pressure. There you go, 999 for the pressure right now and down to 996, 997. So that's pretty weak. Remember, Sally was 982, and Hurricane Laura got as low as 937. Yeah, speaking of low values, there's Teddy out there. Let's check that out. European going down to about 953 there, passes Bermuda, and then it heads, wow, it's pretty deep there towards the end, 944. Yeah, going for some deepening there, 944 millibars as it approaches the Maritimes. Here's a look at the total accumulated precip from the European model. Looks like widespread 2 to 3 inch amounts. That's not too bad. And just some isolated 4 to 8 inch amounts and then 13 offshore. Okay, so that could be worse. The GFS aerial extent looks pretty similar, although the isolated amounts are ranging all the way up to 11 to 12 inches. So the average median amounts, those look to be about 3 to 4 in line with the European model. I'm not too sure if the GFS does well with QPFs, but of course what really matters are the centrally produced products, and that's probably what I would lean towards. A quick look at the radar. Well, we're still way out of range, but we can see some of the outer spiral bands out there off the coast of Galveston. There's a look at the satellite as it looked this morning, center of the circulation out here, and the storm has uh, sheared over quite a bit last night and in, into today. You can see some more convective development there pulsing through the day. Some very cold tops coming up. That brings us to the current time. Looks like it's kind of gone dormant, but I would expect to see more of those towers popping up this evening. Now you can't see the low level circulation too well with the infrared since it's dominated by higher clouds. The visible imagery does pick that up pretty good. You can see those low clouds moving rapidly to the south. And it's pretty easy to see where the circulation is now, somewhere in there. But it does look to me like a lot of these elements out here on the west side, they do look a little bit pancaked and stratiform. And we're not really seeing the vigorous organization that you typically do at this stage in development. But in the end, we do have to leave it to the experts. My expertise is not really in tropical cyclones. Mine is more grounded in severe convective weather. So we'll leave that frame as the final word. Well, we need to get this wrapped up. So in closing, there's a look at the weather around the U.S., you can see that vast amount of dry air entering the southern states and possibly being entrained into the circulation of tropical storm beta. 
And up to the north looks like a crisp, cool evening in the northeast. The weather does become warmer as you move towards the Great Plains. And out in the Rockies, there's another Pacific system making its way eastward. All right, we'll try to check back on things tomorrow. If not, I'll be back Monday. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already. And like and comment and support our Patreon. Any mix of those would be appreciated. Thanks, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.